Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And if you haven't already seen the massive news from today's Pokemon Presents, we are officially getting Generation 9. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are coming out at the end of this year. A brand new generation, a brand new open world Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch. And today I'm going to give some of my initial thoughts and just go over the excitement that I feel for Generation 9, something that I never in my wildest dreams thought was coming this year. So with that being said, let's jump right into things. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. Generation nine, a brand new region, brand new Pokemon to explore and experience. This is everything a Pokemon fan could have wanted. I think it looks really good. I've watched the trailer back a couple times now. It definitely looks like we're dealing with a Legends Arceus situation where the game is going to look a lot more polished once we eventually go through the months and come up to release. That is true. But I will say this, Scarlet and Violet look a lot better on first reveal than Legends Arceus did. I can see an art style here. I can see an intent and a graphical fidelity that they were going for that I really appreciate. We got a ton of information in this trailer. We got a ton of screenshots showing a bunch of Pokemon from various regions. One of the big things people noted is that we can see some Hisuian Pokemon. We saw Hisuian Zoroark. So we know home compatibility is going to be a thing at least. But this is an open world Pokemon game. Pokemon confirmed it directly in their tweet. So this is going to be taking certain elements from Legends Arceus and mixing them into mainline Pokemon. This is modern. This is a modern Pokemon game with all the trappings of a modern game, we can assume. We have our three starters. We have a region, a new region to explore. The starter names, the uh, grass type cat looking Pokemon is uh, Sprigatito, Sprigatito, Sprigatito. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, the fire type little lizard looking thing is uh, Fuecoco. And the water grass, uh, not water, the water duck Pokemon is Quaxly. I would give anything for Quaxly. Quaxly is going to be my starter. These Pokemon are great. I'm not a big fan of the cat. It'll grow on me. The other two I absolutely love. We got uh, a, a scene of battle in this game and with a Lucario and a Hisuian Zoroark, and it looks really good. It also looks like it's seamless. So that's one thing that is going to be coming through from Legends Arceus is that battles are going to seamlessly transition from the overworld into battle. That is a mainstay now. We got the character art for the two trainers, and we actually got some alternative art when they revealed them. So the official artwork that came out has the male and female protagonists in a different outfit than we saw in the games themselves. So that pretty much confirms uh, not only character customization, but probably that the two versions are going to have some differences. So maybe the characters will look different depending on the version. We got a ton of information. We got locales in this. We got cityscapes and outdoor landscapes to see. It looks very lush. It looks almost subtropical. A lot of people are speculating online that this is probably based in the Mediterranean just because of the, the style and the feel of the world. We saw at one point in the trailer in the trainer's bedroom, sort of a half cutout version of what we can assume is the map of the region. And it's led to a lot of speculation that this is the Iberian Peninsula. This is Spain and Portugal, which is to the west of the Mediterranean Sea. So this is a subtropical region of the world. It is directly under France for everybody who's going to be making tons of Kalos theories in the next year. There's so much here to dissect. We're going to do a ton of videos talking about everything that we got from this trailer because we don't know how long it's going to be until we see the game again, but this is just such an exciting time to be a Pokemon fan. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime, but you're not going to want to unsubscribe anytime soon because we have a whole year of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet speculation to go through. It is going to be amazing. If you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on as well so you never miss another upload. My brain is going a million miles a second right now with the announcement of Scarlet and Violet, Generation 9 of Pokemon. So bear with me if my thoughts seem a little jumbled as the days go on. I also am still dealing with a cold, but as the days go on, I, my thoughts will become a little more coherent. To my last point, I'm convinced that this is probably the Iberian Peninsula. For those of you who are friends with me and who know me and have heard me talk about this stuff in the past, I've been pounding the table for what feels like years now that Italy would be a fabulous uh, locale in the real world to turn into a Pokemon region. It's not just because I'm Italian, uh, but I think it would have served really well. 
But honestly, any area on the Mediterranean I think would be really good for a Pokemon region, and Spain, and we presume Portugal, the Iberian Peninsula, is a really good candidate. There is so much culture and uh, locations you can pull from Spain, especially in an open world format that serves Pokemon really well. Some people have pointed out on Twitter that the roundness of the region, just physically, geographically speaking, works really well for an open world game. That's a positive as well. The connection to France in the real world and the seeming connection to Kalos in universe is really good. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of Kalos references, maybe northern uh, Northern Spain or whatever this region is called, the north of the region, is very similar to the culture of Kalos. Maybe they make that connection there. There's so much you can do with this part of the world. I love when they go to Europe for regions. We've gotten Europe a bunch recently. We got Galar, we got Kalos, now we're getting whatever the name of this region will be in Scarlet and Violet. It's very exciting. The Pokemon, uh, the tr starters themselves, as I mentioned before, Quaxley has my heart. I think... It, I, the fire type, I'm also pretty, you know, excited about the more I look at them, but Quaxley is wonderfully derpy. I usually go for the water type starter, so it's it's no mistake that Quaxley is where my mind goes. It looks really good. The trainer art looks a little more kiddish than we've seen in the past. Galar and uh, Hisui seemingly aged up the protagonist. This seems to bring them back down a little bit. Their art style seems more simplistic, but the art style of the world itself when I first saw it, seems like a cross between Legends Arceus and Let's Go, if that makes any sense. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the team working on Let's Go are working on this. It has that more cartoony art style that Let's Go had, but it still has enough realism in the design and the portrayal of the characters that it is also like Legends. How much like Legends is yet to be seen. We know it's open world, they've directly confirmed that. Uh, Hisui wasn't open world, it was open air. So this seems to be an advancement from the Pokemon company. They've clearly been developing these games side to side. I've seen a bit of speculation in the community that it's too early for Gen 9, and I agreed with that. I said it so in my full reaction, which I don't know if I'm going to post anymore now that I have the reaction for Scarlet and Violet out specifically. But I did think it was a little early. But I thought it was early just because I was concerned about the quality of the game, as I think all Pokemon fans are. But if they were developing these games side to side, then they've had years to work on this game. It's not as if one team at Game Freak goes one to one. They're working on multiple things at multiple times, as all studios do. Take a look at Monolith Soft and Xenoblade. We've gotten three Xenoblade games on Switch in the span of five years. Studios make multiple games at once. It's perfectly okay that they do. I don't have a problem with the propensity for how often we get Pokemon games as long as I enjoy them. That's always my big point. And everything I've seen here has me excited. The models of the Pokemon, in a lot of the shots where we got close-ups, specifically of Lucario and Stonejourner, looked really high quality. Looked almost too high quality for the way the art style of the region looked. It's going to be an interesting thing to see as we get more trailers and more information. As some other people have pointed out, Scarlet and Violet, the names, it's the first color-based name we've gotten for Pokemon games since Black 2 and White 2. That's a really nice thing. Any Anytime you can connect a Pokemon game to Generation 5, you're doing something right in my book. We don't know anything about the legendaries. We don't know anything about the story. We haven't met the professor or seen any other Pokemon, at least to this point, since except the starters. In the trailer itself, it seemed like the security guard was like sneaking around the Game Freak offices looking at things he shouldn't have seen. I did like that they played with that idea. I'm just really excited. Pokemon is taking another step into the future here. The game is due out at the end of 2022, and all of a sudden, Nintendo's 2022 looks incredibly packed. Xenoblade 3, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Splatoon 3... We seem like eventually we're going to be getting Breath of the Wild 2, maybe this year. You can presume Scarlet and Violet is going to be a November release. That's usually when Pokemon likes to drop their games. And yeah, it's, it's an incredible time to be a Pokemon fan yet again. I was dead wrong with my predictions a couple days ago for this Presents. Completely wrong. I thought the biggest thing we would get is DLC. I thought they would really heavily push a spinoff to kind of compensate the fact that DLC is the big thing we're getting. They did none of that. We got the usual stuff for like Unite and Cafe Remix and all of that, but it's Gen 9. Gen 9 is here, everybody. Get excited. It is going to be an incredible year 
on the channel. An incredible time to be a Pokemon fan, and I'm hopeful that you guys will stick with me through it all. So if you're excited about what we learned today in Scarlet and Violet, be sure to let me know down in the comments and leave a like on this video because we're going to have a ton of content coming up in the next couple weeks. I'll be talking about the Legend Arceus news as well. At some point, there was a, uh, a, a free update dropped for it, which added some post-game stuff and some stuff with Alpha Battle. So we'll go through all of that as well. With that being said, I'm going to get back to making videos. I'm going to get back to getting excited for Scarlet and Violet. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.